It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing whacker or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our toll-free telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. A listener named Bill writes in with this story he found from a website in New Zealand. And I, um, I for one, see this now as being a worldwide cause. Worldwide. Here it is. It says here that Australian men's groups are calling for Mandatory paternity testing of all newborns. As it emerges, a record number of men are finding they are not the fathers of children they believe to be theirs. Almost a quarter of paternity tests conducted by one of Australia's largest DNA laboratory companies show the man submitting a sample is not... The father. Did you hear that? Let me read it again. This is from Australia. Almost a quarter. I'm going to wait till you turn up the radio. Did you turn it louder? Good. Almost a quarter of paternity tests conducted by one of Australia's largest DNA laboratory companies show the man submitting a sample is not the father. Compared to an estimated one in ten exclusions ten years ago. The number of tests taken in the entire country, by the way, has doubled. (laughs) But get the number. It's only, it was 3,000 in 2003. It's up to more than 6,000 last year. says here thousands of men in Australia are turning to do-it-yourself testing kits available online to discover whether they are the biological father while they are still in a relationship and without telling their partners about their suspicions. Some have brought up children to adulthood or paid tens of thousands of dollars in maintenance to Australia's CSA, the Child Support Agency before finding out they have no genetic link. By the way, the story is accompanied by a photograph of one Stephen Gillespie. And you can see this if you want to. It's on stuff.co.nz, and it comes from the Sun-Herald newspaper. There's a photograph of someone named Stephen Gillespie. He took his shirt off for the photo to reveal his daughter's name, Amber, tattooed on his chest. Only later, after he had her name tattooed to his chest, he found out he wasn't her biological father. Says here, Australian Men's Rights Agency co-director Sue Price said people's lives are being ruined by this. It is not just the men, it's the children who grow up thinking one person is their father and then find out it's someone else. She said in the future, more and more health treatments are going to be based on genetic technology. So it is going to be even more important to know who your biological father is. 
mandatory testing, she says, would get rid of all these problems. I agree. In Australia, the DNA Bioservices Lab conducts more than 2,000 such tests a year from the sale of its DIY do-it-yourself kits. New 2007 figures compiled by the company show that one in 4.5 paternity tests exclude the man as the biological father, a record high since DNA testing began 10 years ago. Managing Director Gary Miller said the increase is across all social classes and ages. It affects everyone. He said before, a lot of the work was for men who had been contacted by a woman or the child support agency for maintenance and wanted a test to prove they weren't the father. Now, he says, we see a lot of men in a relationship or just out of one or who are just looking for reassurance that they are the father and then find out they're not and they're completely devastated says here that under Australian law, the family courts will only order a paternity test if there are reasonable grounds to doubt that the estranged partner is not the biological father. The child support agency does not require proof of paternity beyond a birth certificate or acceptance by a man that he is the father. This means that some men pay tens of thousands of dollars through the CSA before finding out they are not the father even if they have brought up the children for years as their own. They are then denied any legal rights of access to them. Some experts say the proportion of negative paternity tests reflects the fact that the men coming forward already have reasonable doubts and that of the entire population, only 1% of fathers are not the real parent. Professor Margaret Odlowski, Deputy Director of the University of Tasmania's Center for Law and Genetics said, I don't think mandatory testing is a good idea. I could see the argument from the point of creating certainty about parentage, but it would stem from a very suspicious premise, and there would be huge implications in terms of relationships. Well, darling, you see, the bottom line here is this. If the DNA tests are mandatory, then everybody would be getting them. So it would not harm a relationship or cause people to distrust each other because it would be mandatory. If you don't make the DNA test mandatory, the woman is going to say, you don't trust me, I can't believe that you don't trust me. And a lot of guys just back off at that point. You don't even need the woman's involvement. You can get that DNA test without her being involved. If DNA testing were mandatory, let me tell you what would happen. If it were mandatory, we would have less out-of-wedlock births. One of the reasons they won't make it mandatory is because that would put an awful lot of government workers out of business who are busy fleecing innocent guys out of their paychecks. And it would be one last option for women to get money out of men. We never want to take away those options, do we? Outrageous. I'm in favor of mandatory DNA testing. I support mandatory DNA testing. And anybody within the sound of my voice should demand from their senator, their congressman, their state assemblyman, they should demand to know why DNA testing isn't mandatory for every live birth in your state, in your congressional district, in the United States of America. Think how much money we'd save on welfare, food stamps, uh, vaccination programs, school lunch programs. Think how many less women would be getting knocked up and having the baby because they think they've just uh, claimed a jackpot. They've just struck it rich. Mandatory DNA testing would eliminate all of this. There are many people who say, well, mandatory DNA testing, DNA tests are expensive. They'd be less expensive if we were taking more of them. There would be economies of scale. The more DNA testing there is, the less it would cost. It is time for us to step up to the plate and make DNA testing mandatory. Now, I've told my listeners, if you have a baby, if you have a child out there, whether the child lives with you or the child lives with your girlfriend or wherever that child is, 
any way you can, you go out and get a DNA test and find out one way or another if you are the father of that child. You need to know. By the way, just for the purposes of things like medical history, the kid needs to know, too. I'm wondering how many of you have gone out there and done that. How many of you have gotten that DNA test? How many of you were surprised at the results? How many women out there got nailed because a guy went out and got a swab of the kid's mouth or a lock of his hair? Wouldn't mandatory DNA testing be the best thing? By the way, a lot of those lily-livered people out there, those do-gooders, those people who think that man should just pay and pay and pay, uh, they will try to tell you that DNA testing uh, being mandatory is bad because it, it, men should bond with children whether or not they're the father. And really that's just a matter of saying men should pay for other men's mistakes. And if a woman uh, decides she wants to pick a richer guy and say, tag, you're it, than the guy who actually knocked her up, that we shouldn't uh, get in the way of that decision. Outrageous outrageous mandatory DNA testing makes a lot of sense doesn't it Tom like it 1-800-5800 Tom 1-800-5800-866 I might be as you say hormonal to where it might be nothing and I'm just making something big out of it by the way by the way you know how you make a hormone right <laughs> tell me don't pay her <laughs> I wouldn't know about that. The Tom Likey Show. <laughs> it's the Tom Likey Show. At one 800 800 tom That's our telephone number. Mandatory DNA testing. Now in Australia, a quarter of all DNA tests. Tell the man he is not the father of the children he thought were his. What do you think, Tony, on the Tom Likas show? Hello. Tony? Yes. Are you busy? No, Tom, I'm sorry. It was hard to hear you. I apologize. I'm calling about this DNA testing idea that you have. Yeah. I think it's inconsistent with your otherwise libertarian views. How so? Well, libertarians, if it's not oversimplifying, it is keeping Big Brother out of your life, being responsible for what you do. And if uh, there's such a thing as mandatory testing, putting it in the government's hands, that's sort of a scary proposition. The government is already in charge of birth certificates, already in charge of uh, child welfare. And by the way, the government also collects child support. Now, if you would like the government to stop enforcing child support, I'll be more than happy to not have mandatory DNA tests. Well, I'm not saying that if I had uh, to pay child support, I wouldn't think maybe a DNA test makes sense. But in my instance, I was married a number of years. My wife and I wanted to have a baby. And I wouldn't want the government to say, well, now that it's happening, we want to test you for it. Yeah, but guess what? The government uh, processes that paperwork. The government uh, stores in microfiche uh, records uh, the idea that if, if, you, if a woman puts down that you're the father of the child, that's enshrined in government history. It's right there. Is your DNA part of government history? My DNA uh, is not part of government history, but I'm really not concerned about my DNA being part of government history because I'm not planning on committing any crimes. And neither am I. And Um, therefore, if the government is in the birth certificate business, the child support collection business, the welfare business, and all the other businesses it's already in that you probably object to, uh, then before the government takes one dime from me, I want proof. Uh, that's fair. I think if you want proof for the, that, that's fine. But the but government my... also does something else. What's if that? you don't, um, if if you don't uh, get a DNA test within a certain period of time after a child is born, you are assumed to be the father. And then the government uh, uh, takes on the right. If a woman comes to you with a three-year-old child that says, "You owe me money," uh, the government uh, will gleefully take it right out of your paycheck. Well, I, you know, that's. That's a variable that I didn't consider, and it doesn't, and that's not reasonable. But I still don't think. That but that's as long as it's being done, I want the. Uh, see, that's a trick, by the way, that the government uh, uses to take your money. You would think uh, somebody who's a libertarian like yourself would realize that telling a man he's only got a year or two to prove he's not the father 
is a trick to ultimately get him to pay tax, essentially, uh, for some uh, government service that he never uh, utilized. Yeah, I, I don't see. I, I don't connect it all together like that. And by the way, but, but, it, but isn't that true? Uh, that. I'm not sure I uh, follow all that line. Well, let me give you an example. Let's say I commit a murder. Yes. Um, if 15 years from now DNA to evidence proves I'm the murderer, I yeah. go to prison just like if they found me uh, guilty immediately. I follow that. All right. If I uh, am accused of fathering a child more than a year or two after the child is fathered, uh, because I was not given the opportunity or maybe I didn't receive the notice uh, to show up for DNA testing, they take my money, even if I'm not the father. That's outrageous. I agree with you, Tom. And so because we have that, we also need mandatory DNA testing so the government can't trick us into giving our money. If the policies and laws that you just described were changed and that didn't happen... Would you still feel uh, strongly? No. About the only reason DNA? we need mandatory DNA testing is so that the government can't take our money. Well, I, I think it's sort of a Band-Aid solution to other problems. And Yeah, but uh, the problems aren't getting fixed. This is at least a first step. Well, well you and I did, uh, have to uh, disagree on that, Tom. So, in other words, you, with the laws as they are today, you will be happy to pay child support any time a woman comes to you three years later and says you're the father. Well, it ain't going to happen for me, and uh, I don't, well, how do I don't know play that? in that arena. Wait a minute. How do you know that? How do I know I don't play in that arena? Wait a minute. Stop. Now I know you're out of touch with what really goes on in the world, like many libertarians. I'm not uh, a libertarian, though. Come on. You're, you're Mr. Small Government, Mr. Let's Reduce, whatever. Um, the bottom line, and you may not be a member of the Libertarian Party. I'm a libertarian, and I'm not a member of the Libertarian Party, okay? Right. Um, but the fact is that... This is the law as it is today. This is what's going to happen. And and, and it will happen. To, it, it happens to men all the time who have a similar name. Do you know how many Jose Gonzalez's are in Los Angeles County? Do you know how many of them are paying child support for some other Jose Gonzalez? Well, this Tony in L.A. has never been in that situation. So uh, you don't, no, no, but Tony, Tony, you don't have to be in the situation. It could happen tomorrow. Somebody with a social security number one digit away from yours could result in you paying child support. Do you understand that? No, I guess I don't understand that. That's a fact. That's outrageous. You want to look into this? <laughs> I think I'm safe, Tom, but... Uh, but, Tony, guess... not, not effing around doesn't make you safe. Uh, I, guess, I guess if I'm ever faced with that, I'll dig in and make my fight then. But uh, that seems Well, to be... you're a fool for waiting until it happens to you because there are people listening right now that this has happened to. Well, I guess I have trouble identifying uh, with this the same way I have trouble identifying with people who have terrible credit because they behaved irresponsibly and they want something else to fix it. But, Do you uh, think it's possible you could be accused of a crime you didn't commit? Absolutely. Why would that be possible and not this? Well, I'm not saying that the scenario couldn't be possible, but I'd be in a position to straighten it out or defend it. No, myself. you wouldn't. Here, let me tell you how it could happen to you, okay? Uh, uh, Jennifer Freeloader, who lives in a bad part of town, gets knocked up by a guy named Tony, who has a last name that's like yours, but it's not you. OK, right. so she puts on the birth certificate, Tony, whatever your last name is. And uh, for two years, uh, they tried to reach Tony, whatever his name is, at the address in which he allegedly lived. And they can't. Now the child is three years old. The government will say we attempted to reach you, Tony, but we couldn't. So they engage some outside agency to go searching for Tony Smith or whatever your name is. And then they find you with a different name, a different Social Security number. But I guess you haven't been reading the papers over the years about the L.A. County District Attorney and the L.A. City District Attorney and how little they have cared about whether you are the right person or the wrong person. If they discover, once a child is three years old, they discover you, the person they think is the father, the person they think they've been trying to contact, 
they will not accept any explanation. And by the way, they will say, we attempted to contact you, and you did not respond until you have the DNA test. Therefore, you owe for 18 years of child support. It is rampant. It is rampant. And we've done countless shows on this subject. Well, I guess I'm underinformed in this because it's you are to me, and uh, I, you know, the the very uh, farthest edge of the margins that uh, outrageous things happen. I guess will always be there, but to but that's not. But the, but the thing is, it isn't so rare. It isn't, especially in Los Angeles County. Maybe that's why I don't fit directly in your demographic, Tom, because it just. I Tony, can't your age with it. has nothing to do with it. Your demographics have nothing to do with it. Are you a man? Yes. Do you live in Los Angeles County? Apparently you did. Yes. Yeah. Well, it could happen to you. Well, I appreciate the warning, Tom. But you don't care to have mandatory DNA testing to circumvent this law? No. I just, uh, I don't want it at all. I, 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 don't, I don't see it as uh, making sense in the big picture. So, so what would happen to you, Tony, is if somebody knocks on your door and says, pay up, you'll just pay. Because that's what's going to happen. Oh, I you will that, be that, paid. I guess I'll have to find an attorney to fight it at that hey, point. You can fight it all you want. You will be paid. Uh, you will I, be paying. We hear from the guys all the time. You will be paying. There is no way out. You can hire an attorney. You can fight it. You should fight it, but you won't win. Well, I'm sure glad I didn't get my last name because somebody might want to tap into it now. Yeah, that's exactly right, Tony. Well, Tom, we're just going to have to agree to disagree. Well, I, I think you are misguided. Hopefully you won't find out the hard way. 1-800-5800-TOM. Jose is calling from Portland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Yeah, what's up, Tom? How's it going? Well, pretty good. Hey, man, the last caller, man, straight up a dumbass, you know. Uh, I totally agree with you. They need to pass that, or they need to have that law that's mandatory for DNA testing because the reason why I say this because there's a lot of scandalous bitches out there. The reason why I say that, I was I was this one of the guys that, you know, was playing stupid and, you know, fell in love with this hoe or whatever, and uh, I had a kid with her. Um, and then uh, three months ago, Tom, I had that DNA test done, and it turned out that she wasn't mine. And was it beyond the time limit for uh, getting the DNA test done? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I now you're it. paying. And by the way, did you confront her with that information? Yes, I did. Um, I told her, like, how the hell can you do this to me? You know what I'm saying? Basically, you, you messed up my life, you know? But the good thing about it, Tom, I fought it, though, you know what I'm saying? I grabbed my balls. I t you know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? I ain't going to let this bitch get away with this. Took her to court. Courts heard me out. And for some reason why, they favored my side. And now I'm a free man, Tom. And I'm now, proud of you for fighting. Know. What was that? I'm proud of you for fighting it. Thank you, Tom. And the only reason why I'm a free man is because of uh, the people that I work with that uh, swamp the cure products. They're, they're the one that told me that, hey, listen to Tom. And I'm like, Tom, Tom who? And they're like, Tom Likas. I'm like, all right, I'll give this, I'll give this uh, Tom Likas, uh, you know, a try or whatever. And I heard you out, you know, that basically there's a lot of scandalous women out there. So, uh, like I said, I got this uh, DNA test done. So, uh, wait a minute. So, so you got the DNA test because you heard us talking about it on the air? Yes, sir. Sure how did, did by it. the way, how did that bitch react when she that was bitch, told? Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? She could. She told me that she couldn't believe, believe it. You know what I'm saying? She was crying, talking about, please don't leave me. This is your baby. You know it. I was like, whatever, bitch. The, the test says it right there. It's not mine. Leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? And oh, to, this day, to this day, Tom, this bitch is still trying to contact me, Tom. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. I love when they cry. That's my favorite. When I get tears, I'm the happiest man on earth. Yeah. But uh, like I said, you know, I'm done with that bitch. And um, like I said, I thank you, Tom. I appreciate your advice. And it's true. A lot of scandalous bitches out there. I love it, Jose. Thank you for the call. Vic on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing, Father? Doing great, son. That's good, that's good. Listen, man, I'm, I'm kind of short on time. I'll make it quick. I'm one of those guys that try getting shafted by the uh, opposite sex, if you would. Uh, five years after a relationship, uh, mother, father of a child was there all five years. 
And uh, later on, I decided to bone out, you know, it's not working out, whatever. She tried to take me to court uh, claiming child support. Okay, fine. Take me to court, but I want a DNA test. Uh, get the DNA test done. Uh, comes back, child's not mine. Uh, day of court, she shows up wearing, I mean, um, she brings all these pictures from when the baby was a kid, her, her, high, her me, and uh, the baby, whatnot. And uh, turns out the judge says, baby's not yours, you don't have to pay. How did she react to that? Oh, she was frustrated. She was irate. She was irate. She thought for sure she had me by the balls. She was telling me, you, had, you were there for five years. You're, you're all he knows for five years. Granted, I was all he knows. I still am all he knows. But it's not my kid. I'm not paying. And surprisingly enough, this was in L.A. County. Really? Really. Wow. Really saved me $530 a month. That is fantastic. So I'm one of those few guys out there that, you know, believe in DNA testing. If you got to get it done, do it. It's going to save you a lot of money if it's not yours. Just amazing. So that's it, Tom. But That's it, buddy. I just want to let you know that DNA test does work, and it should be mandatory. Thank you so much for that call. I really appreciate it, Vic. All right. If you could take me out with the bong hit, I'd really appreciate it. Here you go. Tom Likas. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-866. Women go into a relationship and get upset because the man isn't fulfilling this fairy tale romance. Yeah. But they're not interested in fulfilling the other side of the fairy tale romance. That's right. Barefoot, pregnant, fellatio well, on demand. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood. At 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. Our conversation this hour, in case you're just tuning in, all began with a story from Australia that said that now almost a quarter of all paternity tests conducted by Australia's leading DNA lab show that the man submitting a sample is not the father. Almost a quarter. And so now men in Argentina are agitating for what we should be agitating for, and that is... Mandatory DNA testing for every live birth in the United States. It makes sense, doesn't it? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Mark on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello? Yes. How you doing, Tom? Doing okay. Good, good. Uh, I was uh, an unfortunate recipient of those letters from the district attorney's office uh, in my early 20s. In about the course of two and a half years, I received four letters saying that if I didn't go and prove I wasn't the parent, the, the father of the child, they were going to garnish my wages. And being that I'm Hispanic and have a pretty common name, that's all they do is uh, just go down the list, and whoever doesn't respond, that's the person who gets dinged. Wouldn't surprise me. So did you respond? Oh, yeah. Oh, heck yeah. I went each time. I uh, had to go to the Norwalk District Attorney's Office, I guess, where they handle the child support and all that good stuff. Uh, it was a little informal interview. They took a photocopy of my license, a Polaroid picture of me, and I had to sign it. And they said they'd get back to me. And that was it. Unbelievable. It's just a matter of a uh, girl saying a name like you said, and they just go down the line. And whoever doesn't respond, well, that's the lucky guy, I guess. That's exactly right. Well, hey, Tom, uh, great show. You're doing a great service for everybody out there. And can uh, you take me out old school? Of course I can. one 800 tom That's our telephone number. Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Chris. Hey, uh, a couple years ago... I hooked up with this chick, and um, she moved out of state, called me up uh, probably about a month after she moved, and uh, told me, I answered the phone, nothing, just, are you ready to be a dad? That was it. Holy cow. Yeah. Um, so I hooked up the phone, dealt with my, uh, dealt with my problem, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I went up to the state that she was in 
got a uh, court order for her to uh, submit to a, um, a paternity test. And, um, you know, it, it did turn out the kid was mine. And, um, you know, but all this, you know, uh, you know, what, I mean, the only thing that I say is, like, what if it wasn't? You know, I'd be stuck. You know what I mean? It's, uh, it's awful. You know, these, uh, these, these poor guys going out there just uh, getting suckered into this crap. It's, it's pretty bad. Well, I, I totally agree with you. And a lot of these guys think they're going to get around to it by or get around it by not responding. Well, yeah. Well, and see, no, 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 no. You you, <laughs> you got to respond. Um, and another thing is, is that um, after I did find out that it, that the child was mine, um, I went ahead and, and, and took sole custody of the kid because if he uh, was that um, irresponsible to pull a stunt like that, she was definitely uh, not responsible enough to have a kid. So uh, now uh, me and my son live in my nice big house in Sherman Oaks, and it's it's, it's great, you know. I mean, so it all works out for the best. Wow, it all but, works uh, yeah, out. For, we, we it all works out for the best it can under the circumstances. What's that? It all works out for the best it can under the circumstances. Well, yes, yes, I agree. Uh, you know, believe me. You know, if if I could, I would, I would much rather be uh, you know alone <laughs> with without a little uh, rug rat running around. Right. But uh, exactly, you know, it works out for the best for the circumstances, exactly like you said. No doubt. So, Ernie, man, thank you so much. Blow me up. I'll blow you up, baby. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. Bernie on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, what's up, Tom? Not much, Bernie. Hey, uh, I want. I think it's a good idea about mandatory DNA testing. Um, I was a victim of it. Uh, I had a child. Uh, four years later, it was bugging me. I went to get a DNA test on my own without the without the respondent, which is a child's mom, and the child wasn't mine. But I was already paying child support. So Aren't I you sorry I you didn't go right in and do that? Yeah, because I got joint custody and, and the whole works already. So I had to take her back to court, and uh, I got me an attorney, the whole works, and my attorney ended up passing the times of limitation. So when I went back to court, San Bernardino County, I got stuck paying child support for the future. So the judge said, you know what, you should go back and sue your lawyer. Now I can find my lawyer. He moved out from that place, from that office. How did you find that lawyer? Recommended. Yeah, well, you ought to go uh, give your uh, friend who recommended that lawyer uh, your personal thanks. Yeah, so um, I went back to court, and they say, you know what? In the eyes of the court, you're dad, and that's it. So I'm still paying child support. Bernie, why didn't you go back right away and get that test done? Because I was confident on my lawyer because in order to no no kid, no i mean when the baby was born i was a dumbass huh okay i'll buy that you were a dumbass that's right <laughs> but now since i'm listening to your show trying to look for ways around it and i can i gotta be paying child support and i gotta have her under my health care and the cut of the mom don't even have a job yep so now they're living off of me i guess well, you let it happen. All righty. Can you take me out with a bong hit? I can, Bernie. Here you go. <coughs> they are lucky I'm not the governor of California or the mayor of Los Angeles. They are lucky that I am not a senator or the president of the United States. This would be my primary concern is making sure that only the people who are responsible for giving birth to children are responsible for those children and nobody else. Outrageous. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Andrew on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Papa? Not much, Andrew. Hey. Yeah, I got a doozy for you. It's a, it's a long story. I'm going to try to make it short. But bottom line is I was a father for two years. I, I was out west. I moved back east. Um, 
found out um, I, it was actually a little different because I was trying to establish paternity, and the the, la- the girl was trying to get around it, and she's writing the judge. Uh, every time I have her, had her court ordered, she was writing a judge and, and getting it postponed and postponed. So finally my family, you know, this is 11 years ago, We they decided to pay so we could find out, have a peace of mind, um, and, and, and it came back negative. And then, I mean, devastate our family because, you know, the little girl lived with us for two years. And then after that, um, I had a court order finally, and she had to go to the court, so she had that DNA done as well. So she had a multitude of tests, and it, it was just devastating my family. Um, you know, the little girl was with us for two years. And um, and then after that, it, it gets even better, but some friends of mine, because the, the baby pictures, they looked identical, so you can't go off looks, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, the uh, A couple friends of mine, she looked so much like me, um, a couple of friends of mine over the course of a few years ended up going in and out of three, three of my buddies, one found out that two of his three kids were not his. So it's just, you know, I couldn't recommend it more. It, it just, it's, you know, the, these women devastate people and I wasn't even with her. I mean, I had been with her in, in, in the beginning, um, but she had every opportunity to tell me I wasn't the father, but didn't. So, you know, I, I went back, tried to do the right thing and she just, she just killed it. So I can't recommend it enough, Tom. How did she react when the truth came out? I I, I mean, we, we actually opened. We opened. I'll never forget this. We opened. It was just another day because it had been so long. We were trying to get her to go to court. So when we opened the results, I mean, I, I literally, I don't remember it. I had some sort of, you know, I passed out, and it just, it, it just devastated my family because it had been a while. And, you know, my worst fault, it, I was – you know, my my reason, I got attached to the, the little girl really quick, and she looked a lot like me. Uh, my father was, you know, I should have listened to him the whole time. He didn't want to get attached. So he, he kind of, you know, he waited. So finally he said, let's just do this. So, one, you know, I had her a majority of the time. We just went out one day for ice cream. Uh, we did a swab test, uh, sent it to a place in Texas, and, yeah, I mean, it devastated. It was, it was really tough. And then, you know, by then, I mean, we always had attorneys, so we... You know, I wanted to fight still because, uh, you know, I was attached to her. And, and, um, and you know, he just said, look, it's going to – a lot of emotion and a lot of money it's going to cost you. And bottom line, you, you've been doing the right thing, but you have zero rights. So I decided to head back west. Um, and, you know, it brings me to another thing. I I don't condone it by any means, but I understand why a lot of these – there's, you know, parental abductions, which is, is, a, is a big – parental abductions, 80, 80 or 90 percent of abductions. And – um, sometimes I understand why they went because believe me, I thought about it. But the thing is, I, you know, I rationalized and I, you know, I knew I knew not to do it. And so a lot of these, that's why you have a lot of that evidence. Not all parental abductions are bad, and I hate to say that. I mean, I kind of understand, but it's just whether you don't cross the line, you know, if you can rationalize it. So it was a tough thing, Tom. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you because we're, you know, I, I wanted kids, and uh, it was just it was ridiculous. Yep, well, so, I, I totally agree, and I believe me, I sympathize with what you went through. Jay on the Tom Likas show, hello. Hello, Tom, how are you? Great. Hey, I've got a different take on this subject. I really appreciate you bringing this out, and I agree with you 100% that it should be mandatory because then it takes out all the guilt that, uh, you know, these bitches try to put on people. But, you know, if you can establish a link between uh, that a person has been deceived into thinking – this is a child, and the DNA doesn't match up, that bitch that's providing that has known that she's been sleeping around. So she's actually been practicing deception, and my take on it is that she ought to be prosecuted just like any other thief, just like any other embezzler, just like any other felon who is going to take a man. Yeah, good luck doing that to women in this country, for God's sake. It's the Tom Likas Show.